Hey guys, you know cold frames are great for people who want to continue gardening throughout the winter if you don't live in like a, a deep arctic region or something like that. Uh, like here in southern Oregon, you can grow greens all year long in a cold frame. But if you don't want to grow during the winter, you can certainly still use a cold frame for getting a, a jump on growing in the spring or extend your season in the fall. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I built this cold frame right here and it's only going to cost, it cost me just under 25 bucks. Alright, let's get started. Okay, I just got back from the hardware store and in their lumber section they had this huge pallet of cedar fencing outside and they had them on sale for $1.29 each. That's not per foot, that's each board. They're one by six and six foot long. Now. The only disadvantage to using these, now I bought them because it's a really screaming good deal. If you try to buy like regular dug fir or pine, you're going to pay through the nose. The cedar is pretty inexpensive. But the drawback is, they're six feet long, but you'll notice the tops are beveled, so I'm going to lose an inch or so at the top, so I'm not going to get a full six foot out of this. And I was going to make these three foot deep, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these boards at 70 inches, and then lop off the extra and then cut some of them at 35 inches so that'll be uh, just a, an inch shy of three feet okay now that's going to be for the sides so I'm going to take three of these and cut these three at 70 inches and then cut them in half at 35 so I'm going to have six pieces all together oh, I got dust in my eye or something um, so I'll have six pieces for the sides and I'll show you how I'm going to assemble those first. But the, now the front is going to be four foot because it's three inch. It's three. It's almost 36, which is 35 inches deep, which is from front to back. And then the width of it is going to be four foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these and then just cut them at four foot. And I'll have two of those, which will make the front like this, which will make it. Uh, well, they're they're not quite they're not six inches. They're five and a half, so it'll be eleven inches. So the front of it's going to be eleven inches. So I'm going to cut two of these for the front at four foot, and then for the back, the back is going to be twenty-two inches. So I'm going to have four of these cut at four foot for the back. Okay, so that's where all nine come into play, and then. Uh, they had some 2x4s. I asked them for the economy grade 2x4, which is pretty much the junk. Uh, and they're kind of they're chewed up. They got knots and everything else. Stuff that people don't want. And I got the 2x4s because I'm going to rip it into, I'm going to rip it in half and make 2x2s out of it. And that's going to be for the lid, for the, for the doors. Um, and then I went and got some outdoor uh, hinges that are, you know they're made for their weather type hinges and they're probably galvanized or something they were actually believe it or not that that board was two dollars these were each a dollar twenty nine each the hinges were seven bucks so I <laughs> so I bought four hinges for seven bucks and that I mean I guess that's not too horrible but little pieces of metal were more expensive than these boards so um, and then for the, the now you could you could really knock yourself out and, and buy plexiglass or regular glass and and fashion that on the top and whatnot, and and for a long-term solution, that's that's great. But I had a bunch of plastic that I had covering some stuff to winterize, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and use some of that plastic, and then put little strips on the inside to hold the plastic, and and that should work. That'll work for a good year or so. Um, what I might do though is change my mind. And as, I'm, as this project is going, and I might try to uh, find some cheap plexiglass or maybe some uh, greenhouse panels or something like that and use those. But for right now, I'm just going to put the plastic on. And when I do decide to upgrade to the plexiglass or glass, I'll, I'll do another video on that. But for right now, we're just going to cover it with plastic. And we'll see how long that plastic lasts. I know it doesn't last very long. Last time I built a greenhouse, many, many years ago, and I made it out of plastic, it only lasted like three years and the plastic was all chewed up so it's, I'm not impressed with it but it'll work in a pinch for now just to kind of get us going okay so let's go ahead and start working on the sides okay so here are the six pieces cut at 35 inches each and this if, if my math is correct now I'm not a great mathematician but 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these and lay them like this. And that's going to be one side. And then I'm going to take two others, another side. Now, how I'm going to do the tops of these sides, this is one side, this is another. I'm going to take two more. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is on the tops of this, I'm going to, on these two boards, measure from this corner to this corner. Just take a straight edge and put a line across. And then I'm going to cut this across like this. So I'm going to end up with two exact pieces. This one will go over onto this, on these two boards, and then these two will stay here. Rather than having to measure it and then cut the degrees, the angle, just perfect, I figure, I mean, why, I mean, why complicate things, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to actually clamp these. I'm not going to glue and, cl and, and, and clamp them because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some strips in here to hold this together. But I'm going to clamp these together because these are a little bit warped because they were sitting outside. And that's another disadvantage to these. When you get these boards outside and they're cheap, they're just, they're soaking wet. I mean, if I could, if I was strong enough to bend these, you, you just probably see water running out. So I'm going to clamp these. I'm going to take a straight edge and go straight across here and cut that. And then this side will stay here and this one will flip over onto this side. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully it'll make sense when I start doing this. Okay. Okay. So here are the top two pieces. I took my straight edge and went from corner to corner on here and I'm going to cut diagonally right across here like this. I think what I'm going to do though is, um, I think I've decided to, to make this easier because I can't glue these because they're um, they're just too wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on here, put these back down, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the, the the braces on here. Now what I'm going to use for these is on the front and the back. Since these are going to be cut at four foot, I'm going to have an extra two feet off of these. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these remaining seven pieces at four foot. And then I'll have a bunch of these pieces left over because these are all going to be going four foot, uh, the front and the back. So I'm going to go cut these first and then the pieces that are left over, I'm going to rip them on the table saw and use them as braces here to hold these pieces together. All right. Okay, so let me show you what I did now. These last remaining six pieces, I went, since these all had to be cut at four foot, I went and cut those at four foot, and it gave me these two foot pieces left over. And I had, of course, six of these, and there's, these are pretty much gonna be scrap. But I took two of them, and I ripped them down the center on the table saw, and I end up with these four pieces, and then I cut them at 20 inches, and I'm gonna use these for braces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I am gonna, I'm gonna glue these, even though this, this wood is waterlogged, having it in the garage here for a few days is hopefully going to dry it out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clamp these to make them straight. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue them and then screw these on. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, let it dry for an hour or two. And then I'm going to mark from corner to corner here on these top two pieces like I was talking about. And then I'm going to just cut that off and I'm going to make sure that I don't that I don't have any screws in the path of this. <clears throat> now what I probably would probably be a good idea is to make a to make a, a guide for the skill saw and I think that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you how I do that when I flip this over. I'll show you how I make a guide to cut a straight line on my skill saw. Okay? Okay, so I've gone ahead and it's, it's dried and I flipped it over and I'm going to mark my straight edge here. Put my line on. Whoops. Okay. Uh, where were that knot? Stupid amateur. See, there's a void in the wood right there. That's where it started to come out. That's okay. <clears throat> it was cheap wood. It's just to keep my vegetables warm, right? Okay, so what I've done here is I've put my guide an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter 
away from the line. And what that is, that is the distance between the blade here and the outside edge of this, of this guide right here. So what happens is if I just follow this guide, I'm going to be in an inch and a quarter, and then I just press up against this, and it should cut a straight line. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, I had to run in to get my coveralls on. It's getting a little chilly out here. Um, now, one thing that I did, I, I kind of screwed up on this. What I shouldn't have done was when I, when I put these boards on, when I had the other piece on here, I went and put them full pieces like this, and then I glued all of them. What I should have done was to not glue, not put glue on this section up here, because what happened is, is when I ended up with this piece here, um, it, these are actually on the wrong side, so I had to take these off. And luckily, I just popped them off because the glue hadn't set yet. It had just started to set. So I'll just sand this down a little bit and get rid of that glue. Because what I need to do is I need to turn these over and put them on this side. And then put more braces here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is the finished one here. Let me show you here. There's the finished one on here, and this side ended up being, when I cut it, this side ended up being uh, exactly the same, and I don't want that, because I want, I want these braces to be on the inside. So I hope, I hope you understand that. I hope I'm, hope I'm saying it correctly. So, But um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put these braces on here like this. So I just flip this one over, and you can see how wet this wood is, just sitting there for a little bit. Excuse me. Just sitting there for a little bit kind of seeped into this plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and put new braces on here. I'm going to cut these on my chop saw. I'll just eyeball them. Try to get up here kind of as close as I can. I'll probably even do an angle cut kind of like this right around in there. And then this one here, I'll just do a little angle cut here like that. And then I'll glue these and put these on. Looks good. Okay. Now, let's do the back. Okay, for the back, you remember we are going four foot wide. And we're going to use one, two, that's the ugly side. Three. <clears throat> See how ugly that is? Look at how chewed up that is there. But that's all right. Since I'm not gluing these edges, it doesn't matter. As long as the outside is flush, that's all I care about. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. Okay, so I went and ripped all the rest of the scraps. So I'm going to put one about here and then another one like this, kind of marry those together. And that'll be one brace there and then I'll put, I'm actually not going to have as much wood left over as I thought I would. And then I'll do the same thing here, like that. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the front piece. Now the front piece is really simple. If you were noticing when I put this together, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, that is way too big. Okay, the reason why I put these six together and braced them all together was because this wasn't just going to be the back. That would make a really high back. When I put all these together, um, I'm actually putting the back and the front together. All I need to do is just take my skill saw and just cut here and cut here. And then I've got uh, my front piece right here. Okay? Um, now, there's one thing, <clears throat> there's one other thing left before I take and I assemble all these together. 
um, is that because the front is going to be shorter and the top is, is going to be higher, when I go to do my lid, it's going to be um, at an angle. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to bevel the top of the back and the top of the front so that uh, it will match the angle of the, of the doors, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just cut these right here. And I could even use a handsaw. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. And then when I do that, we're going to be, we're going to be ready to assemble this uh, while I've got to cut my bevels. Now, there's also another consideration. When I went and I put these together, I, th I was thinking that a lot of people are going to wonder why I didn't go out on the edges with this. And that way, I mean, I could have assembled these separate and I would have had enough wood to go out to the edge here on each one of these and that way when I stood these up it would give me something to screw into no, you know in other words if the brace was out here well there's two reasons why I didn't do that number one this stuff has a tendency to kind of warp uh, because it's wet and when it dries out in the sun it's going to want to warp so I needed to have these in a little bit to hold these from kind of moving up and down or, or in and out um, and the second reason is I don't want to use this cedar for my bracing because the cedar is just too soft I needed to have something strong to screw into um, it's 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 kind of bad enough where I've got to screw into the cedar and then go into the harder stuff uh, but that's just the way this is the way it is what I'm going to use I'm going to use my 2x4 when I rip my 2x4 down the center I'm going to use part of that now I didn't really calculate this well enough because I actually needed uh, more 2x4 than just one. But I do have a lot of scrap 2x4s, but if you're building this project and you don't have any other wood laying around, you're going to have to get another 2x4. Because I didn't calculate enough that I needed it for bracing and I needed it for the doors. So you're going to have to consider that. So one more piece of 2x4, of, uh, of okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these and I'm going to end up with my, my back and my front, okay? Okay, so here's my front and back. Now, as I was saying before, because there's a there's a, um, a difference in height, then I'm going to have this bevel that I'm going to have to cut <clears throat> right along here. Now you could do it two ways. If you don't have a table saw, um, you could assemble this thing and then take a skill saw with it with it angled and then cut your bevel this way on there. But to me, I'm not good at freehanding that, <clears throat> so I'm going to figure out what the bevel is and then I'm going to rip it on the table saw. Okay. Okay, so to find the angle on this, it's really simple. I just take my side piece, which of course is what the top and front piece are going to have to match as far as angle, and then just put my little cheap plastic angle finder on it, and it says here that it's 75 degrees, so I just need to set my uh, table saw to match that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is take the uh, front and back piece and then just take the 75 degrees off the edge, and then it should be it should match perfectly okay let's give it a try okay so I went ahead and cut the bevels on my back and front piece now um, if you don't have a table saw and um, you don't have a skill saw or you're not good with a skill saw now I, I really don't recommend using a skill saw because I mean have, having to hold this or clamp it and then try to use a skill saw on it I just don't recommend that that's to me, that's just dangerous, and I don't think that's what skill saws were designed for. So if you don't have a table saw, you could just skip this process, in my opinion, altogether, because it's not going to, I don't think it's going to matter, because, I mean, 15 degrees, which was 75, on my table saw, I had to mark it to 15 degrees, because you're basically, you're basically taking off, uh, you're subtracting it from the 90 degree corner is what you're doing, because, um, so anyways, you could just skip that that step altogether if you wanted to but I was just getting a little tweaky so um, so okay now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the braces now with the braces it's gonna be just a little bit shy I don't want to come up and then have to cut the braces at an angle also so I'm gonna come up and stop you know somewhere right around you know an inch or so below okay and then um, same thing with the back too so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stand these up and I'm, I'm gonna cut my braces first and then stand these up and I'm gonna start screwing them together okay now I will, I mean, I, I, I suppose if you wanted to, this is not going to move once I get it into position out in the yard. But you could, since the only braces it's going to have are the, the four corner braces, if you're going to want to move it around, you're going to want to put some bigger braces in, like, in between from the corner or from the sides to the side, like front and back, and then a, maybe a brace across the other side. 
I'm not going to worry about it because I'm not going to move it. Okay, so I cut my four corner corner braces. I cut two of them at, well, I ripped my 2 by 4 down the center. And then I cut two of them at 9 and a half inches and two of them at 20 and a half inches. That's going to give me plenty of clearance on my piece here like this. Now, one thing that one thing to note is that when you when you're looking at the front of this, let me show you. If you're looking at the front of this piece, <clears throat> I want the side piece to be inside. That way when I'm looking at the front, I don't see the edge of the side piece. You see what I mean? I don't want I don't want it to be out here. So I'm going to attach these to the side piece and then I'm going to bring the side piece in and then screw them in. Now, you on the back, I guess it would, if you don't want to see the, the edge of the back piece, um, you could take this, this when you cut these, I mean, I, I guess in hindsight, I would have cut these boards about an inch and a half smaller, because that way I would cut, you know, there'd be a three quarters of an inch off of here, three quarters of an inch on this side, that way when I attach my side piece to it, it would also be the edge of this would be invisible, you know, does that make any sense? In other words, when I do these, the, the side piece is going to be inside. And so I'm not going to see it on the front, but I'm going to see it on the edge. So you could cut these an inch and a half, which is three quarters of an inch less on each side. That way the side piece butts up against this. So you're not going to see the edge of this one, and you're not going to see the edge of the side piece on the front. Am I making sense? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach my attach my braces. Okay, so I got the front piece on. <clears throat> One thing that I didn't mention that I should have, when you're drilling into soft stuff like this um, cedar, you want to make sure that you pre-drill the holes because this stuff will just split right out. So make sure that you, yeah, make sure you pre-drill. Okay, so there's the front. <clears throat> and here's what I was mentioning. That this goes in so that you don't see the um, from the front you don't see the edge now you'll see the edge here but that's only if you're looking at it from the side so if you're if you're walking in straight on it you won't see the edge of the wood which um, I guess it's not that big of a deal because it's a cold frame right but if you are tweaky about things like that then by all means in fact what you also could do is you could put a trim on here and make it look a little nicer if you wanted to it would cover up the uh, that's how they cover up the screw holes and stuff like on siding of houses and things. So you could put some on here if you wanted to. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so here it is so far. <clears throat> now there's a couple things that you might want to do. Um, when I cut this across here like this, it left this little piece here. And I've got the brace inside, but um, it does have a little bit of movement here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, drill this here and I'm going to put a small screw in to hold this. Same thing over here on this one here. It, I mean, it's not going to probably get a lot of movement, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just drill that in anyways, and uh, that'll keep that secure. Okay, so now I've got my lid cut. Now what I've got here is I've got two 35-inch pieces for the sides, and then I've got two four-foot pieces for the back and the front. Now there's two ways to do this. You could cut these side pieces at the full what is it, 38, 38 and a half inches, and then use what's called a lap joint. Basically a lap joint, would you would cut a notch out of this, the bottom of this one, and then cut a notch out of the top of this one, and then they would, you know, you cut it halfway down, and then this piece would overlap onto this piece, and then you just screw it into there, and it makes a perfect square. And that would be a better way to do it. It would square it up better, and it would keep it, it's much stronger. But since I, I a lot of people don't have dado blades and whatnot, um, Sometimes they can be kind of tricky to cut. So I just wanted to do this so that just about anybody could put this thing together. So what I did was, once I got these cut, I went ahead and I pre-drilled holes here about a third of the way in, and then I put a three-inch screw all the way in here to just to hold this. Now, that's not going to be strong enough to keep this thing from tweaking back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut some small pieces for the corner here. Now, this lid here is going to sit on top of the three-quarter inch uh, cedar. So basically, the cedar is going to be on the outside edge, so that's going to give me a good inch on the inside to do whatever I need to here to strengthen this up. 
and also these I'm gonna cut four pieces basically small pieces of plywood that are gonna go in the corners and also I'm gonna cut some small strips here and I want to use that to hold the the, the plastic down um, and I'm not gonna glue it because if I want to remove these and put new plastic on I can later on I'm probably gonna put a, a, a plexiglass lid or some kind of a fiber lid on it but for right now I'm gonna put plastic on it and the plastics gonna last a few years anyway so um, okay, I'm going to cut out my small pieces of plywood and I'm going to lay the plastic out and then, um, well actually I'm going to lay the plastic out first and then I'm going to lay the furring strips and then the pieces of plywood on top of it, alright? Okay, I should note how I'm squaring this up. What I'm doing is I'm taking the, this side edge of the table, which I know this table is perfectly square, and then I'm going to kind of tweak this and push it and I'm going to clamp it so that um, it's, it's, it's straight along here and it's straight along here. You um, could do it basically any way, but what you want to do is make sure from corner to corner that um, I've got 61 and 5 eighths, and then you go from corner to corner, 61, whoops, 61 and 5 eighths, perfect. So, but I'm going to clamp it anyways because when I start messing with this, it might it might kind of kind of shift and tweak. Okay, so I went and cut out a piece of plastic here. Um, and um, I've cut four of these pieces of half inch plywood that I had laying around and I'm going to go in about three quarters of an inch here I'm going to screw this in and then I'm going to go to the other corners tighten this up and then uh, once we get this nice and tight and get the four pieces on now also I I did clamp this to the table too so um, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw these in get my plastic nice and tight and then I'm going to cut the furring strips for the edges here, okay? So I went and screwed these pieces in. I put three screws in each one. And then I cut some more of this plywood that I had laying around. You can pretty much use anything. Plywood is the best because plywood doesn't split as easily when you try to screw it. So I'm just going to go ahead. I don't have to go all the way to the edges. Just something that's going to kind of hold this here. So I'm going to put probably, you know, probably put... I think I'll put two of them here. I'll cut, these are just scraps. So I'll put two of them here, put some up there and around here just to kind of hold this plastic down, all right? Okay, so here it is with the lid on. Now one thing to consider that I, that I didn't when I put this plastic on was I had two braces. There's one there and one there, those braces that are on the side. And so this plywood that I put on the edges here to hold the plastic on was hitting that. So I just had to make some cuts here and take a couple pieces off of that so um, that's one thing to consider so alright so the last thing to do is to put the hinges on and take it outside and we're just about finished Okay, so here it is. Now there are a couple things to consider that I didn't mention when building this. For instance, the top. Now the top is made out of just regular 2x4, ripped 2x4, and so it's not preserved. And so you might want to either stain it or you can paint it to preserve that so it doesn't, um, it doesn't rot out or get weather beaten. I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to last years anyway, so um, I'm going to leave it that way. So, But you could even, if you were concerned about it, make it out of, uh, they have 2x4 cedar, you could use that too. So um, anyway, so the, and the second thing of course is you could use glass instead of this plastic, but um, you can also put, if you wanted to put a handle on this, you could put a handle on it, um, put a stick in here to hold this up if you want to. Um, but those are just little extra things you could probably just figure out on your own. I'm just going to put grab an old stick and just put a stick in here to hold this up when I when it's kind of hot and I want to have let some air in. So, um, anyways, so there you go. There it is. I hope that was all helpful and thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll catch y'all later. Okay, folks. And one final note: make sure when you're working around power tools, you're careful. Make sure when you're working with solvents and glues that you read the packages and the warnings and. Just if you're not sure of, of, of what you're doing, then don't do it, all right? You could get seriously hurt. All right, we'll catch you later.